Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. In this video, we'll talk about a bizarre broadcasting controversy involving ESPN, Pitt, and Rutgers. And now, on with our feature presentation. Before I talk about today's video topic, let's address the elephant in the room right now and get it out of the way. What happened with Tua last night was absolutely sickening, and there's nothing I can add on the situation that hasn't been said already, hence why I'm not doing a video on the topic. The fact that he was even allowed to play is crazy, and all we can do at this point is hope for the best and hope that he is okay. Because I'll be honest, as much as I love this league, and as much as I love this sport, it was tough to watch last night's game after that. Heads are going to roll, and rightfully so, because that was a truly awful moment and shows just how far we have to go in order to protect the players. So let's just get that out of the way right now, because that's obviously the big story from last night. And while I'm not doing a video on it, because I can't provide any new insight that you haven't heard by this point, I'm not oblivious to that fact. Now with that being said, let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, in what was, shall we say, a mixed bag performance. The good news was that they won, and at the end of the day in this league, a win is a win. To get back to 500 after their surprisingly awful start to the season is impressive, and they're right back in the swing of things, especially with three of their next five games being against some absolutely awful teams in the NFC South. Safety Von Bell had the best game of his career. After getting drafted in 2016 and having two interceptions in his entire career, he matched that total in yesterday's game, with one of those picks essentially deciding the game late in the fourth quarter. And what can be said about that incredible 1-2-3 combo at wide receiver of Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd that hasn't been said already? It was another great outing for that trio, all things considered. However, that's not to say that the Bengals played a particularly great game, as they definitely had their lulls in questionable play calls on offense. But the big story, at least in my mind for them, is that holy cow, Joe Mixon looks absolutely terrible. Last year, Mixon was one of the better running backs in all of football. He made it to the first Pro Bowl of his career after running for over 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns on 4.1 yards per carry, and he was an instrumental part in helping guide the Bengals to the Super Bowl for the third time in franchise history. This year, however, it's a completely different story. Some of it is on Mixon, and some of it is on an offensive line that didn't seem to get a whole lot better in the offseason, even despite the team's best efforts. But whatever the case, this much is true. Giving the ball to mix it on the ground this season has been incredibly ineffective, to the point where you're essentially conceding the down. Through the first four games of the season, Mixon's production is at a far cry from what it was at last season, as on 82 carries, he's only managed to pick up 224 yards, averaging 2.7 yards per carry. And Thursday's game against the Dolphins was no exception, as on 24 carries, he picked up just 61 yards, averaging a mere 2.5 yards per carry. And there were some absolutely terrible runs in there. There was the awful decision to toss the ball to Mixon on 4th and 1, which got stuffed in the backfield and resulted in a turnover on downs. There were multiple runs right on the goal line that got absolutely nothing. There were a lot of runs that went from anywhere from 0 yards to 2 yards. And despite getting the ball 24 times, his longest carry of the day went for just 7 yards. Teddy Bridgewater, who is not even the slightest bit mobile, had a longer run than Mixon's longest run of the night. And again, not all of this is on Mixon. I can't blame him for runs where the offensive line just doesn't do its job, and he's met with three defenders swarming in on him in the backfield right as he gets the ball. I can't blame him for that pitch out on 4th and 1, because that play never had any business of being called. But it's not just one game where he's had a ton of carries and a ton of touches, and yet has done absolutely nothing. It's been like this the entire season. In every single game, Mixon touched the ball at least 12 times. In every single game, Mixon has averaged 3 yards per carry or less. If you're averaging 3 yards per carry or less, that's really bad, and he's now done it with a significant workload in each of his first four games. So I decided to do some digging. I wanted to look at other running backs in the history of the NFL to get off to a start this poor, and see if they were able to turn it around, not just for this season, but for the rest of their career. Is this something to be concerned about? And folks, what Mixon is doing right now is unprecedented, 
in all the worst ways, to the point where, at least in terms of guys who got a significant workload, it might genuinely be the worst start in NFL history. And if history is anything to go off of, don't expect it to get a whole lot better anytime soon. Basically, if you're a Bengals fan, you're a fantasy owner, or you have any other vested interest in the running back doing well, things are not looking good going forward and going beyond 2022. For starters, as I said before, in every game this season, Mixon has averaged less than 3.1 yards per carry and has touched the ball at least 12 times. He had 27 carries for 82 yards in the opener against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had 19 carries for 57 yards against the Dallas Cowboys in Week 2. He had 24 carries for 61 yards against Miami yesterday, and in his worst game, he had 12 carries for 24 yards in Week 3 against the New York Jets. In the entire history of the NFL, spanning over 100 years, there is only one other player to ever accomplish the slow light. There is only one other player to have 12 or more rushing attempts in each of his team's first four games, and fail to average more than three yards per carry in any single one of those games. That player came all the way back in 1965, when a running back on the Detroit Lions by the name of Joe Don Looney started the season off this poorly. Unfortunately, there are no highlights available of Looney during those first four games of 1965, so enjoy some more of these mixed-in lowlights from this season. However, if you want to learn more about Looney, because he is quite the Looney character, pun completely intended, click the card in the upper right corner. This is the same running back that one year later in 1966 would be suspended in the middle of a game with the Lions. Looney got off to a really bad start through four games in 1965. He had 13 carries for 20 yards against the Rams in Week 1, had 12 carries for 23 yards against Minnesota in Week 2, had 22 carries for 61 yards against Washington in Week 3, and had 15 carries for 41 yards against Baltimore in Week 4. And for the former first-round pick, after that abysmal start, things did not get better at all. He only finished the season with 356 rushing yards and 3.1 yards per carry picking up just 211 rushing yards the rest of the way, before the Lions started giving their reps to other running backs on the team. Again, when it comes to this stat, this is a sample size of one that we're talking about. But don't worry, there's more data. Plus, it's not like being in an exclusive club with Joe Don Looney is a good club to be in, especially since Looney was off the Lions midway through the 1966 season and only picked up 452 more rushing yards over the rest of his career. And in many ways, Mixon is off to an even worse start than Looney, because at least Looney, in those four games, found the end zone twice, whereas Mixon has only been able to find the end zone once thus far in 2022. As for alarming stat number two, over the course of the entire season, Mixon is averaging 2.7 yards per carry on 82 rushing attempts, and has only scored one touchdown. I looked at every single running back to have similar stats, so I looked at every running back through their first four games to have more than 75 rushing attempts, which would come out to around 300 over the course of an entire season. I looked at the running backs to fit that criteria, and then looked at how many averaged 2.7 yards per carry over the course of those four games with one touchdown or less. The end result? There's no one. Mixon is the first and only player in the history of the NFL to start a season off with that many carries and that little production. In fact, the only other running back that comes close, and the previous worst, was held by Curtis Martin, when he averaged 2.8 yards per carry with no touchdowns on 82 carries back in 2005. Now you might be saying that being in the same company as Curtis Martin is a good thing. And most years, you'd be right. But this is 2005 Curtis Martin that we're talking about, as in, the only year of his career where he didn't have a 1,000 rushing yards, where he put up a career-worst 3.3 yards per carry, where he looked completely over the hill, even though he was coming off of a great 2004 season where he led the league in rushing yards, and where he never played again afterwards. Martin only had 509 more rushing yards over his entire career after that abysmal four-game stretch to start the year off. Again, only a sample size of one if we're looking at 2.8 yards per carry or less, with that aforementioned criteria, although it's not good company to be in. But don't worry, because it somehow gets even worse for Mixon. Because let's go back to that previous stat, 
that 75 rushing attempt number and lower it by just one measly rushing attempt. So now, instead of being on pace to have 300 carries, you're on pace to have slightly less than that. The good news is that no longer is Mixon all alone, as there's another running back in the fold who had a pretty similarly poor start. The bad news? Well, it's Adrian Morrell of the Arizona Cardinals. After three straight seasons in the second half of the 90s where he had over a thousand yards rushing and was somewhat of a force to be reckoned with, by 1999, he was a shell of his former self, and through four games, had 74 carries for 198 yards on 2.68 yards per carry and no touchdowns. And as was the case for Looney in 1965 and Martin in 2005, things did not get better for Morrell for the rest of the season and for the rest of his career. He only picked up 355 more rushing yards over the ensuing 12 games to cap off 1999 never finding the end zone again and losing his starting spot. After over a thousand yards in 1998 and a career-high eight rushing touchdowns, he was nothing one year later. And that awful start was the awful sign of things to come. So to recap that stat, if we're looking at running backs to average less than 2.8 yards per carry on at least 74 attempts with no touchdowns or one touchdown, the list is Adrian Morrell and Joe Mixon. If we look at running backs to average less than 2.9 yards per carry on more than 75 rushing attempts, the list is an aging Curtis Martin and Joe Mixon. And if we're looking at 2.7 yards per carry, it's just Joe Mixon and no one else. Nothing statistically speaking is on Mixon's side here. And just for some more perspective, there have been 211 running backs since the merger, including Mixon, to run at least 82 times through the first four games. Mixon ranks 210th in total yardage out of all of them. In just about every stat involving a running back, getting a high workload over the first month and failing to produce, Mixon either stands alone or stands with one other running back, who like Mixon, had potential or used to be very, very good, and then never did anything in the NFL after that. Whatever stat you settle on, and whatever group you put him in, whether it's with Jodon Looney, or Curtis Martin, or Adrian Morrell, or whoever it may be. History shows that a running back trying to escape this hole and get out of it is highly, and I truly mean, highly unlikely to happen, as not only are they likely going to struggle for the rest of the season, but their career is also numbered. Obviously, there's time to turn things around, even if Mixon just does not look the same whatsoever as he has in the past, as he looks a lot slower and a lot less elusive. He doesn't pass the eye test like he did last year. But don't bank on it, especially since these numbers are historically bad, to the point where we really haven't seen any high-volume running back ever start off this poorly in the history of the NFL. Because if once is an accident, twice is a trend, and three times is a problem, then what's four times? Well, if you're a fan of Joe Mixon, or a fan of the Bengals, and history is anything to go off of, it quite simply means that it's time to panic. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.